Hello everyone, my name is Alan Ellison. I'm running for the United States Senate. Uh, I wanted to speak with you all today. We didn't get a chance to talk yesterday uh, for our scheduled Fridays for Florida uh, Town Hall. So uh, we wanted to come back today and continue the conversation from our previous uh, days. Uh, we wanna talk about women's issues. We wanna talk about uh, the reauthorization for uh, Violence Against Women's Act. And I also want to give you just a little bit of a uh, history of uh, a woman who not only inspired me, but also uh, inspired Dr. King and the nation. Her name was Mahalia Jackson. Uh, Mahalia Jackson, Jackson was known as an international uh, figure on the uh, gospel scene. She's known as the, the queen of gospel music. Uh, she was also a person who was always there whenever Dr. Martin Luther King would give speeches. She would be the person who literally would open up the speeches and the two of them, they had a very beautiful and powerful relationship. Uh, they were so intertwined with one another's style and repertoire that they oftentimes coordinated uh, their, his, Dr. King's speech with the songs that she would uh, sing to open up for him. Uh, there was a particular day in American history where Dr. King was going to give a speech at the Lincoln Memorial. And right before he was getting ready to give that speech, he had his notes and everything all ready to go. Uh, Mahalia Jackson, who stood on the podium with him, and you can actually see this uh, in video, uh, she told him to tell them about the dream. And that's when Dr. King switched courses uh, and went into an improvisational speech and began to talk about uh, his dream for America. And uh, a lot of people don't know that it was uh, Mahalia Jackson who was there to invest in Dr. King, uh, both with her time, but also with her money to keep him uh, being able to do the work that he was uh, meant to do. And so sometimes, you know, whenever you think about uh, great men in history, you have to always consider the fact that there have always been great women there to push these great men. And I, I didn't want to uh, go through this uh, live without at least acknowledging uh, at least one woman in American history that helped to make impact to create the kind of environment where we're even talking about uh, women's rights and equality and voting rights. And so I wanted you all to uh, get a chance, if you haven't already, uh, YouTube Mahalia Jackson, listen to her music, very beautiful, very powerful singer, but also a very powerful activist and humanitarian uh, in this fight for equality. Today, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, and that act is currently in Congress. It has already passed the House, and now it is in the Senate for consideration. And we want to make sure that you are at least uh, reaching out to your senators uh, in whatever state that you are, to encourage them to please sign uh, this bill, vote yes on this bill, because it's going to have so much impact for women and families. And so I'm going to give you some of the highlights of what this bill is about. And uh, that way you will have a better understanding and an appreciation for all of those who have sponsored this bill and have been trying to push this bill uh, for years now. And we finally have an oppor another opportunity to make this become the, the official law of the land. And so in Title I, this bill enhances the legal tools to combat domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. Title II, improving services for victims. Uh, Title III, services, protections, and justice for young victims. Uh, Title V or IV, Violence reduction practices. Uh, all, of, all of what I'm saying, they're going to put funding and resources behind every component of what I'm saying. And this definitely needs to happen. Title V, strengthening the, hip, the healthcare system's response. Uh, Title VI, safe homes for victims. We know that oftentimes women are in situations where they become victims of domestic violence. And a lot of times they stay in those situations because they have nowhere to go. This bill will actually allocate funding so that women can have safe houses to be able to go to 
and get away from the violence without being on the streets. Uh, Title VII, Homicide Reduction Initiatives. So this is going to provide funding to uh, reduce the amount of homicides that is inflicted upon our women uh, throughout this nation. But it also goes a step further and it provides safety for Indian women. You know, a lot of times uh, on reservations, uh, women are victimized and because they're not uh, where we are, they get overlooked. And this bill helps to provide services and resources for women on uh, reservations. It also in Title, uh, title 10, it um, opens an office, like it creates an actual office on violence against women. And I think this is so important because uh, we can talk about laws, we can talk about policies, but if there is no actual organization to provide oversight, uh, a lot of times we end up not being able to have that much teeth and, and know where these funds are going and know how to track uh, the, the best um, responses for what we're trying to have. And so to the creation of the Office on Violence Against Women, that's going to be very powerful. Uh, Title 11, improving conditions for women in federal custody. We know that oftentimes uh, in the penal system, in the prisons around the country, women are constantly being victimized. We hear the stories when they come out of, out of custody, uh, they're being assaulted, they're being raped, and we want to make sure that there are resources uh, available so that we can protect women when they're in federal custody. Uh, Title uh, 12, it, uh, law enforcement tools to enhance public safety. We want to make sure that whenever law enforcement uh, comes into contact with women, that they have uh, body cams across the country, uh, holds them accountable. We want to make sure that there is trainings that are in place to be able to deal with uh, women. Also, we want to make sure that there are more women on the force so that women can deal with women where they are. Uh, it, is, it is so sad that whenever you have a, a male officer who comes onto the scene to deal with a woman and he handles her in such a way with such great force. I just saw a video the other day where this uh, big officer, he was huge, and the way that he was handling this little teenage girl shoving her head into the, into the um, cement, it was uh, very disheartening to watch. And I think it would have been a whole lot better if a woman was on the scene, at least to be able to deal uh, with her from a, a, a female's perspective. We have to be able to uh, approach uh, our citizens in a way where they are respected uh, for who they are, not handled like animals. And I think uh, when, you, when you look at the fact that uh, women are more likely to be more nurturing than men, then in those instances where we need nurturers, I think it's just, it just makes sense to have more nurturers in places where there is nurturing needed rather than uh, uh, brute force. And so uh, Title 13 is uh, closing the law enforcement consent loophole. That's also known as closing the boyfriend loophole. This is something that the Brady campaign is, has been pushing for and it's something we definitely need. So I'm glad that it's actually in this uh, particular provision. Uh, and there are so many other uh, programs inside of this bill. It also talks about increasing cyber enforcement. We know that oftentimes in this day and age, women are victimized uh, on the internet. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we are increasing enforcement capabilities in the cyber world as well. It also has provisions to keep children safe as well. So whenever you have women in this country who are oftentimes at the head of the household, we need to not only look out for them, but everyone in their household. So this is a, this is a great bill. Please get your senators, get your um, representatives to get on board with this. Continue to talk about this. Uh, there's also protections for certain immigrant women. We know that there was a crisis at the border uh, under the previous administration. We know that whenever um, they, people would come in here looking for asylum, families were uh, torn apart. Oftentimes, women were assaulted, women were raped. We want to make sure that anyone that comes from another country that comes into our country, whether it's, it's legal or illegal, that they are being treated with uh, dignity, that they're being retreated uh, as, as humans. And that's what this bill helps to do. It helps to provide the protections and the resources necessary. 
Uh, it also, you know, it, it does a lot to combat domestic violence. And that's a big thing in America. We have so many people that are in such constant stress, such uh, dire situations, and they take it out on one another. Oftentimes, women are being the biggest victims in, in our society. And we want to do everything in our power to make sure that we bring that to a minimum. So please, uh, this bill, uh, its technical name is H.R. 1620. But it's also known as the Violence Against Women's Act. And again, it's, it's just passed the House uh, with overwhelming Democratic support. Uh, but we need to make sure that this bill passes uh, the Senate. And because this is Women History Month, I want to also highlight the fact that in America, it is illegal for women to be paid less than men. And we know that for every dollar that a man makes in this country, women are getting paid 77 cents on that dollar. For black women, women of color, they're getting paid as much as 66 cents on the dollar. That is illegal. It has been illegal since 1963 under the Equal Pay Act. It also was illegal under the 1964 Civil Rights Act, Title VII. And we wanna make sure that uh, when I'm in the Senate, that we push for uh, more uh, teeth to be in these uh, bills. We want to actually create an office like what this bill is creating, an office to oversee uh, women that have been unjustly treated, un unfairly paid. And what I would like to see is to see that this office actually goes back for at least 20 years to check the employer's pay history record to see if there was any violations and if there are any violations, I believe that those employers should pay back to those women all of the monies that they should have been getting paid for 20 years ago. And I think that we need to hold these employers uh, responsible. I think that we need to uh, level the playing field because it's just right. Uh, Dr. King fought for this. Mahalia Jackson supported Dr. King on this issue. And it is so it is so sad to know that uh, there are women in my family that have actually found out through communication uh, with em uh, employees, uh, colleagues, that they are making way less than their male counterparts. It is so sad because I know that it's not just in my family, it's in your family as well. And we have opportunities to rectify these wrongs, make them right, and hold people accountable. But it's going to start with change. We have to change who's in these elected offices. Uh, whenever you know that people that have been in office that have not done what they have, sh they should have done, chances are they're not going to do it. So what we have to do is we have to remove them from office and bring someone in who will get the job done. My name's Alan Ellison. I'm running for the United States Senate. I wanted to uh, take this time to thank you all for joining us today to talk about this uh, this issue, this impactful issue, uh, women, women's issues, women, uh, violence against women uh, act. And uh, we also want to uh, make sure that we're raising our voices on voting rights act. We just saw in Georgia where a sitting representative was arrested simply because she wanted to knock on the door and see what was going on with voting rights in Georgia. We are under attack throughout the country. There have been 253 bills that have been presented in 43 states, all targeting uh, trying to suppress votes. And if we allow these uh, Jim Crow style Republicans to continue to squash votes, then we are nowhere. That is not what democracy is. If you believe in democracy, then stand up, let your voices be heard, don't take this land down, Continue to call your representatives, call your, your senators, and let them know that you will not stand for voter suppression. This is not 1963. This is 2021. We should not even be dealing with this. We need the, the John Lewis voting right bill right now. We need HR1. We need to uh, fix our campaign finance reforms. We need to fix ballot access because right now in Florida, people that want to run for office at this level are having to pay as much as $10,000 just to get their name on the ballot. Uh, it should not be this hard. And I want to thank you for taking the time. Please uh, share our message, share this video, join our team. You can find us at allenellison.com. Uh, we want your help. We need your help. 
We can't do this without you. This is a partnership and we are building a movement. Uh, currently, we have over 600 volunteers. We have thousands of amplifiers and we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to build and we're going to continue to raise the awareness on the issues that matter most to you. Again, this is Women's History Month. Continue to share all of the women that have made impact in your life. Uh, talk about the women that are continuing to make impact in your life. And uh, let's continue to uplift, empower our women because they are literally the backbone of our society and they are the backbone of our families. Thank you all very much. You have a wonderful evening.